Communism in the Catholic Church. Communism in the Catholic Church. Have the error of Russia now infected in Rome? Have the errors of Russia now infected Rome? Our Lady of Fatima mysteriously warned the world of the danger that the then unspecified errors of Russia would somehow come to spread throughout the whole world. If Russia would not first be adequately and solemnly consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Man. Such a consecration, moreover, was prophesied to attain Russia's own fuller conversion to the Catholic faith and thus to the genuine life and culture of the faith. A lady from heaven came to Fatima not only as a prophet but also as a mighty stronghold against modernism which is the complementum of all errors, compendium of all errors which destroys the Catholic faith from within and from outside. What then are the errors of Russia as they were deploring at the time of the Bolshevik Russian Revolution shortly after the Fatima Revolution? It would seem that they include, among other things, a list of characteristics, a list of characteristics. First of all, a reductively atheistic, materialistic world view which aims at undermining anything Christian in the society. An ideology that is disconnected from truth and reality. Then a cultural Marxism. Marxism that has permeated also in the West. Then a revolutionary socialistic spirit undermines especially major aspects of family life especially with the help of feminism, divorce, and abortion. Then a Hegelian dialectic philosophy, also with the dialectic materialism, which claims that strife and ongoing contention in the society are necessary in order to bring about higher and unfolding forms of life such an approach essentially denies and purportedly transcends the principles and law of non-contradiction. Then a form of governing revolutionary socialism that is also constitutionally called democratic centralism. The formulation meaning that things have the appearance of being openly democratic, yet they are all centrally organized and managed in the background. Then a disregard for tradition and for the traditional institutions of the society. And now of the church, such as the Curia, as counter-revolutionary forces, then a deceitful misuse of language with intent to manipulate the public. The mother of branding one's own opponents with a sweeping and demeaning epithets that abstractly categorize 
as right wing or counter revolutionary. An approach or to ongoing revolutionary changes where there is both a slow path and a fast path of the revolution such as the dialectic and the dialectical process toward more moderate and compromising opponents one first tries to incorporate them into the professed new system so as to use them as Lenin's useful idiots in the sense that they help give to the world the illusory idea that nothing has really changed. As the last play element, but of course a very important and painful one for those who lived under communism, there is a constant sense of distrust and fear unto the imprisonment and killing of one's obstinate opponents. The errors of Russia have reached Rome. Yes, really it is. But how? They have come to us now several witnesses who speak of an atmosphere of fear and suppression of free speech in Catholic Rome. Just very recently, a Rome correspondent with much inside knowledge revealed in an interview just how fearful people in employment now are at the Vatican. Fatima, in fact, is a counter plan against the satanic Soviet plan, which is a strategy to turn the Catholic Church into an active instrument of the communist conquest. On the other hand, Our Lady came to Fatima in 1917 to confirm in anticipation the teaching of Pope Pius XI, 1937, that communism is intrinsically perverse. It is said, in the encyclical Divini Radham Tauris, number 58. In the Fatima message, therefore, Our Lady reinstates and confirms all the important doctrines which would be denied when Marxism and atheistic communism would be spread throughout the whole world. When we see in the Church of today real conflict between truth and error, that is, traditional catechism and new catechism, between good and evil, that is, doctrinal spirituality and psycho-spirituality, and between the traditional movements and the modernist renewal movements, that is, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church versus the new church. We shall be consoled to see that Our Lady has chosen to stand by the side of the true teachings of the Catholic Church, ready to fight against the great red dragon of communism. And therefore, my dear brethren, the Most High, the Holy Mother, must form for himself in the YLMC great saints who shall be chosen to match themselves against the enemies of God. They shall fight, overthrow, and crush the heretics, the heretics, schismatics, and the idolaters and sinners, atheists, and shall draw the whole world to the true de devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The hope of our Lord, Our Lady's victory in this battle against the new church powers has been definitely foretold as follows. In the end, my immaculate heart will be triumphed, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. Our Lady said, 
at Fatima on July 13, 1970. This is confirmed by Daniel the prophet to whom the power and triumph of the Immaculate Heart was shown as a stone cut off a mountain without hands which filled the whole earth. But when will this Our Lady's plan of my comments? What would be the sign of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart? This will happen as said by St. Louis de Montfort, the people enter with the grace and light of the Holy Ghost into the interior and perfect practice of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Our Lady of Fatima warned about the persecution of the Church. Persecution of the Church. From the beginning, the history of the church is a stormy one. The kingdom of God, the true church, will always be attacked in this world by storms and waves of errors and persecutions. Especially in these days, the fisherman's boat, the church is exposed to the winds and waves of modernism, atheism, and Satanism, attacking it from both inside and outside, and it looks as if Jesus is sleeping in it, as if allowing the boat to be sunk in the depth of errors, errors of the new collegial equality, the new religious liberty, and the new ecumenical fraternity at the Second Vatican Council. All inside the Catholic Church threatening the very foundation of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Pope Pius XII, Eugene Cardinal Pacelli in 1931, before his election to the papacy, made a highly prophetic statement in response to the Fatima third secret. He said, I am worried by the Blessed Virgin's message to Lucia of Fatima. This persistence of Mary about the dangers which menace the Holy Catholic Church is a divine warning against the suicide of altering the faith in her liturgy. And he says, I hear all around me Innovators who wish to dismantle the sacred chapel, destroy the universal flame of the true faith of the Church, reject her ornaments and make her feel remorse for her historical past. And he says, a day will come when the civilized world will deny its God, when the Church will doubt as Peter doubted, she will be tempted to believe that man has become God. Just think of these words of Pope Pius XII. And afterwards, Archbishop Vigano has cited the crooks of the third secret saying, the corruption has reached the very top of the church's hierarchy. Cardinal Mario Schiappi, who read the Third Secret and who was personal papal theologian to several popes like Pope John the Twenty-Third, Paul the Sixth, and John Paul the Second, in a personal communication he said, in the Third Secret it is foretold, among other things, that the great apostasy in the Church will begin at the top. Pope John Paul the Pope Paul the Sixth, concerning the crisis in the Church, when on June 29, 1972, the occasion of the ninth anniversary of his coronation, 
declare to the world from some fissure or gap the smoke of Satan entered into the temple of God. Cardinal Ratzinger in 1990 had told his friend Father Ingo Dallinger that Our Lady in the Third Secret also warned not to change the liturgy. Ratzinger, who had read the Third Secret, was confessing that there is more to the secret than what was revealed in June 2000, all but confirming that it, is, it did warn about not changing the liturgy as he had previously told Lording Tarlinger. Consider now the prediction of the 9th century Freemason Canon Roca, who said that to deprive the Church of its supernatural character, this certainly seems to get with the predictions of a bad council and a bad mass. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth said on July 15, 2017, that the bark of Christ, the Church, is on the verge of capsizing. His Eminence Cardinal Burke echoed a similar note last year when he said, perhaps we have arrived at the end of times. From the scriptures we know that most members of the church will fall into apostasy in the end, leaving only a remnant, the conclave of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, to meet with Christ at His second coming. The church is truly in the grips of the world's crisis of its history, a crisis in which every member of the church is being tried for his valor and strength, as it is said in the Apocalypse chapter 3, verse 10. It is a test to see if we will remain faithful to the rule of tradition and flow with a new order or flow with a new order of change that has ensued since the Council. In the meantime, we follow St. Paul's remedy to withstand the operation of error of the last times. Stand fast, he says, and hold the traditions which you have learned, whether by word or by our epistle. Second Epistle to Thessalonians, chapter 2, 14. Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have learned, whether by word or by our epistle. Now therefore, my dear brethren, we must seriously ask, what is our duty? We should continue fighting against the tempest with trust and confidence in the divine power of Jesus Christ. We should not lose confidence and cry out, Lord save us, we perish, because we are now living through the terrible battle which was foreseen by St. John Bosco in the year 1862. In his dream or vision, the Church and Papacy has been surrounded by enemies with infernal armies. In that prophetic vision of St. John Bosco, the Pope who steers the boat responds to all these attacks by directing the bark towards the true worship of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and towards the true devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And immediately the enemies disappear and a great peace then prevails. That is the vision given to St. John Bosco as a warning for the latter times. 
yes my dear brethren these two devotions the devotion of preparation to the most sacred heart of jesus in the most blessed sacrament and the devotion of preparation to the immaculate heart of mary are the powerful means represented by the two columns emerging from the sea in the vision to saint john bosco which the tempest of errors will be calm down in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost amen